the end of the day, selling is transferring a feeling. If you don't have the feeling, you can't transfer it. If you exactly. don't have a good, positive feeling, dude, you're an actor. You have to sell and run your business from a place of positivity. And however you get there, God bless you. Welcome to the P Primo Show. It is episode 127, and we are here with William Attaway on how to build an unbreakable business. Let's pay the bills first. If you haven't gotten my book already, Sell a Million, what are you waiting for? Now is the best time to get 101 business, uh, tips to increase your sales and profits if you are a furniture or a mattress store owner. And the best compliment I've ever gotten about this book was from my dear friend, Doug Stewart, who said, take the word furniture or mattress out of the title and the book. And it's just a great marketing book. So thank you, Doug. And thank you, my friends at the Mattress Industry Network Group together. We have uh, we have gotten our membership to over 2,000. So if you are in the mattress industry, you need to be in this group. It's 100% free. It's a Facebook group. And we're here to help each other build, market, sell, and succeed in the mattress industry. It's for everybody. Scan the code. My, my fabulous uh, producer, it, uh, Chris Stone, is putting that up there. Just go ahead and give that a scan. And it'll bring you directly to the Mattress Industry Network group. Without a further to do, let me get to William Attaway. William, thank you for being here the day before July 4th and our Independence Day. Uh, building an unbreakable business is probably more important now than it's ever been before. And um, I'm looking forward to, to uh, finding out what all is entailed in that. But I have to say something to you. In my prep for the show, you use a word that I use a lot. And the word's intentional. And I love that word because it's very important that we as store owners and business owners are intentional. Intentional with everything that we say and everything that we do and every minute of our day. Even if it's this is relaxed time. Being intentional is one of the building blocks that you have to have to have success in life. So my hat is off to you. Tell me about building an unbreakable business. Well, Pete, first, let me just say thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here with you. You know, the, the thing that I have learned in my journey coaching leaders now for over 25 years and being in leadership myself for nearly 30, what I've what I've learned is that you never achieve excellence accidentally. <laughs> you have to be intentional about it. And so what we see so often is business owners who think that they will achieve excellence, but they want to drift in their day to day. You know, and you never drift into excellence. You always drift into mediocrity. And mediocrity inspired no one ever. This is why I talk so much about being intentional. I believe if you want to build an unbreakable business, it begins with your mindset. It begins with your purpose, your intentionality. So let's dive into that a little bit. We always hear mindset, mindset, mindset. You've been working with business owners and helping them with their mindset in addition to their, their leadership skills. But if there was a common theme, William, uh, that you could say, you know what? I see these one, two, three mistakes consistently being made by business owners. What would those be? I think one of those is allowing the urgent to drown out the important. Uh, and this is true no matter your field, no matter what you're leading. But I see it, especially with business owners, because there are so many hats they have to wear, so many balls they have to juggle. And the urgent just crowds out the important in their life and in their business. They get to the end of the day. They get to the end of the week. They get to the end of the month or the end of the quarter, which we just hit the end of our quarter. And 
now what? You look back and, and you see a whole lot of regret. You see a whole lot of, oh, I wish I had, I meant to, if I only had, that's a lack of intentionality. It's a lack of focus. And this is why one of the things that I talk with business owners a lot about is the importance of clear-minded focus, pre-deciding, being intentional, again, about what you want to accomplish this day, this week, this month, this quarter, and then measuring it, evaluating it, determining, am I moving in the right direction or am I drifting? You know, that this um, idea of drifting I haven't heard anyone else say it the way you just said it, William. And I think it's super important. You will drift if you don't script out your day. Yes. My, my day scripted out. I yes. can show it to you. Show it to you right now. Right here. There it is. And between 1, 11, 30 and one, we're here. <laughs> and before that, I had a bunch of things that I had to do and I had some things to do after. And you know why I'm so happy? The reason I'm so happy, William, is because I did some things that I scheduled after before. And now I'm ahead of the game. Right. Love, love that. And and so, listen, I I was a tyrannical to do Lister to mm. the point where I would I would want to check for. Using the restroom. I mean, ridiculousness. <laughs> I mean, I would want to check for drinking water. I would want to check for this, that, and the other. It's like, stop. At some point, the madness has to stop. But having a basic script of the major important things that you don't want to forget about in a day. And always, always, always identify that frog. Identify that one thing that you don't want to do today but it's important and you need to do it and you should do it as early in the day as possible. And for me, even though I enjoy working out, my frog is almost always working out unless it's a difficult conversation mm -hmm. that I need to have with a business partner or with a uh, client of mine yeah. that might, but usually I can get the workout in before that anyway. So those things happen. This The tyranny of the urgent is a huge time suck in, in that idea of drifting. And, and you know, what I love about you identifying that is if you're aware of it as, as a business owner, if you're aware that you can drift, that you will get pulled away that that the current is going to take you unless you're very very intentional clear-minded and focused and i'm using your words william what is number two in terms of mistakes i think the second mistake i see most often has to do with the 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 chaos the turmoil that surrounds too many leaders they are constantly reacting to what is going on around them. Somebody's at their door. Somebody, hey, I just need a second. Well, of course, we know it's never a second, is it? It's never a minute. It's five or 10 or 15 minutes by the time you get back to the mental place you were when you were interrupted. And how many times do those interruptions happen? Well, if we're not careful, those interruptions become our day. They're not interruptions in our day. They become our day. That chaos surrounds so many leaders. And at the end of the day, a week, a month, a quarter, et cetera, you, you look back and you're like, man, what did I accomplish? What did I get done? Unless you have a plan, unless you're intentional, and I love your script for your day, I have something similar. What we do is we choose what we're going to spend our time on. You get 168 hours a week. I get 168 hours a week. Everyone who is listening or watching gets 168 hours a week. How are you going to spend it? You decide. Are you going to be purposeful with it? Or are you just going to be reacting to what's going on around you? Here's what I know. The people around you have a wonderful plan for your life. <laughs> and they will impose it on you unless you decide you are going to drive the bus. You are going to choose what you're going to spend your time, your best hours on. I choose to do that. You choose to do that, Pete. And yeah. I think that's why we get things done. Too many leaders are surrounded instead by chaos. 
And what I talk to them about is understanding that there's a different way. What if you were able to lead from a place of calmness instead of just reacting to the chaos all around you? Yeah, yeah, it, that is so important. It reminds me of a of a funny story that Dan Kennedy, one of the legendary marketers and probably one of the best um, uh, time experts um, going on, because his his big thing is no. That's right. <laughs> the most important word is no. You had to, you have to say no to everything. And, and you know, here's one of the things that was going on when Dan was a young uh, buck and he was just getting started in his marketing business. They and, and you know he had acquired another business and he actually had some employees and the big rage of the day. And this is what 40 years ago, the big rage of the day was open door mm. leadership, open yeah. door executive leadership. So he literally took the door off of his office <laughs> and exactly what you said happened because your words actually triggered my memory of Dan telling this story <laughs> at a seminar and, and he was overwhelmed. Everybody, because that door was open, mm -hmm. everybody felt like they could bring every little cotton picking little teeny tiny thing that might have been big in their world, but it was not executive level decision making time for right. for that item. And so after about a week of this, he said, this is for the birds, put the door back on and purposefully kept it closed at times mm -hmm. when he needed to focus. Yes. And what I'm saying to you as a business owner, it's okay to close your door. It's okay to put the do not disturb sign on and close your door and take a few minutes to work on the important things that you as an executive have to work on. And, you know, a lot of my customers and store owners, they are the jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. So, that's right. They answer the phone, they make the deliveries, they are the salesman, they are the secretary, they are the warehouse receiving team, they are everything. And still, I will say this to you, it's more important for you to get in there an hour ahead of time, everything should be closed, work on your business for a good 45 minutes to an hour every day, and it will have magical impact on your productivity as a store owner. And it's hard. It's not yeah. easy when you're wearing all of these hats, but as your business grows and gets bigger, you'll be able to uh, spend more time focusing on the business instead of in the business. And the highest level of that is the Jeff Janakovos of the world mm -hmm. uh, in, in our business. Uh, Jeff Janakovo owns Gardner's mattress and more. He does not need to be at his business anymore. He yeah. has uh, he has systems in place. He has employees who are extremely well trained, and they're empowered, William, yes. to make decisions without him. So, one of the things secrets, if you're gonna extract yourself from being in the business, you have to empower your employees to make decisions. Uh, when you're not there and they should be the same exact decisions that you make. You have a grid in your head, whether you realize it or not for decision-making commit that on paper and then transfer all of that, that you can to your employees so that they are making decisions the same way you would. And then you're out from underneath some of this everyday uh, chaos and, and the tyranny of, of the urgent. And, you know, it's not easy to fight uh, for that time to work on your business, but it's so important. Um, I see the wheels going, so I'm going to shut up and let you talk. I'm sorry, William. <laughs> no, you're doing great. I, I think that's that's so absolutely true, Pete. I think one of the one of the, the best tools that I use with as I'm coaching leaders or as I'm working with my team is giving them an opportunity to make decisions giving them space to understand that they have the ability to make the right choice. 
I'll teach them, I'll coach them, I'll come alongside them, but I have to give them that opportunity. And one of the tools that I use often is when they come to me with a problem that I know is not one that I need to make, it's one that they have the ability to make, I'll tell them, you decide. You decide. Those two words can free a business owner, any business owner, if they're willing to equip and empower their team. You decide. I'm not going to make that decision for you. You decide. I love that. And your decision is the right one. Whoa, that means I'm not going to come back and whack you when you don't do it exactly like I think you should have. Your decision is the right one. I'm going to equip you. I'm going to empower you. And I'm not going to put you in the situation where you're going to fail. I'm not going to set you up to fail. I'm going to give you the ability to have some training wheels at first. I'm going to, I'm going to give you that ability in a space that is not going to be catastrophic if you choose poorly. But you decide. And then we'll talk about it after. We'll do an after action report. We'll, we'll evaluate that together and say, okay, yeah, well, what did you learn? What would you do different next time? This is how you develop your team. And if you will spend the time it takes to do that, and yes, it takes longer than you just doing it yourself in the moment. But over time, this is how you learn freedom. This is how you will acquire freedom by equipping and empowering your team. Just those two words. You decide. That's powerful. That is so good, William. Um, Please, Chris, make a thing you decide. Make a little banner for you decide this after action report this is so important so so important at the end of the day not at the end of the week not at the end of the quarter not after you're so pissed off you can't even see straight that's right right? maybe maybe when they're new it's hour by hour I, i i don't know but what would you do different and here are some ideas Here are some ideas of what you could have said or done differently. Does that make sense? And what are you comfortable with? Because we don't want many little Williams running around, right? We, we want Mary Jane to be the best Mary Jane that she can be. That's right. But with our leadership and, and our input, and one of the things that I constantly say, people get sick of it, but uh, I'll say it until the day I'm off the air. And then when I'm pushing up daisies, you'll hear it right out of my grave. And that is define the job clearly, tell them the metrics, model the behaviors, and then give consistent feedback. And this is where everyone falls down. And I don't care if you're a fortune 100 um, or a little mom pastor, this is where everyone falls falls. They yeah. fall in the consistent piece of the feedback. Yeah. Do you know why? Because it's not comfortable correcting somebody, but you've got to correct them. And the sooner you correct them, the better it's going to be for everybody involved. And, yeah. and just as an aside, no employee wants to purposely fail. The reason they came to you is they felt that there was some kind of a fit and that they could have some kind of input and that they could help mold uh, what this company is becoming. And when you make your uh, employees feel like they're part of making this what it's going to be, that employee is going to go a lot further than any other way. And the only way to get them all the way on board is this consistent feedback? What would you do different? That's a home run, William. Uh, you know, and the after action report, I love it. I love it for employees. And 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 here's a little mindset shift for everybody listening. You need to do it for yourself. And if you did it every day, that's not too much. But you should do it at least once a week. Yes. What could I have done better? What could I have done different? And I I think an after action report is huge for all of us. It's a great tool with employees. Um, So I see we, we kind of like dove right into it. So when you're building an unbreakable business, part of it has to be communication with your employees. So they're on board with the mission, right? That's right. 
That's right. And and I, I want to tag on that evaluation comment just for a second because right. I think I think it's so important that we understand that experience does not make you better. There's this myth that people people believe that experience is what makes you, oh, they've got 10 years of experience. They must be great at this. Not necessarily. Experience does not make you better. Evaluated experience makes you better. And this is why evaluation matters so much. I coach leaders, you need to be doing a weekly review. If you can do daily, that's even better. But weekly at minimum, like you said, if you're doing a weekly review, I want you to look back. I want you to think over the previous week and ask yourself three questions. What went right? Start there. Celebrate your wins. What went right? What can I celebrate this week? So often business owners, leaders struggle with this one. We focus on what went wrong. We focus on the things that didn't go the way we wanted. That's easy. Anybody can do that. I want you to start and rewire your mindset by looking at what went right. What can we celebrate? When you do that, what you're training your mind to do is to begin to see what went right in the moment. You're going to have more to celebrate because what you focus on is what you get more of. I want you to focus on what went right first. Celebrate it. What went right? Second question in your weekly review. What went wrong? Now, that's the one everybody can get, right? Everybody gets that. What went wrong? It's not hard for us to identify the things that we wish had gone differently. What are the decisions we made, the conversations that we had that we wish we could redo? Okay, what went wrong? Call it out, evaluate it. And then you go to that third question. What would I do different next time? And this is where you process your learnings. From what went wrong, you evaluate and you say, hey, what what did I do that I would like to undo and redo? What would I do different next time? That's where you process it mentally so that the next time you're in a similar situation, you'll have that learning to move forward with. You'll have that to inform your decision in the moment because you have already processed it. Too often, we're circling the same drains over and over and over again as business owners because we've never processed this. We've never processed the wins. We've never processed what went wrong or what we would do different next time. If you will do that weekly, if you will make this part of your weekly rhythm, you will see fruit from that immediately. Wow. That is so good. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm looking back, you're, you're kind of making me uh, go back in time. And I, I, I was really lucky. I, um, I worked for a three store furniture chain and I worked for a store owner who is an extraordinarily just unbelievably talented salesperson Mm -hmm. who actually knew why he was such a good salesperson and he was actually able to translate it and every Wednesday. So part of my schedule was every Wednesday, I was the only salesman on the floor most of the time. And that's because it was the slowest day of the week. Most of the time I was on the floor with three other uh, two, two to three other salespeople. But this time I was just, it was just me and Craig and he, he was the store owner. And what I learned on that Wednesday with that one-on-one coaching and, 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 you know, he said so many things that really tie into some of the things that you said. He said, Pete, you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Embrace it. Yes. He goes, just, have fun, try to say and do things that are different than other salespeople, have a reason for what you're doing. And if you screw up, me and you are going to sit down and we're going to talk about it. It's, it, yes. it's not a problem. And so he was conditioning me to receive coaching. And so one of the things that we forget, William, is to coach is a great thing. But making them open, making your employees open to coaching and understanding this is part of what we do. And it's not bad. It's good. It's, it's yes. going to make you better. It's going to make you more valuable. And yes, he said something that was amazing. He goes, if I see you losing a sale and I think there's a sale, I'm walking in and I'm taking the sale over. And I will let you know when I want you to leave. And sometimes I want you to stay. 
And I want mm. you to hear exactly what I'm saying to the customer word for word. He goes, but what's never going to happen, Pete, is I'm never taking half of your sale. The whole sale is yours. I am here to put money in your pocket and not take money out of your pocket. Mm. Wow. What a difference than at other jobs that I had had up to this point. Seems like everybody was trying to reach into my pocket, <laughs> right? And that, that, uh, letting them, know, letting somebody know that you're here to help them get better. You're here to help them make more money and you're going to coach them. And by the way, sometimes things are going to get a little bit hairy. Things are going to get a little bit uncomfortable. Just know this. I have your back. I have your yeah. back. I'm on team Pete and I'm here to help you. And that was so unbelievably great of an experience for me because I received one-on-one -on -one coaching every Wednesday. I used to love Wednesdays <laughs> because I would see a master at his craft yeah. close sales that I couldn't close. And then I could do it next time. And like when I would say the same things that he said, the same way that he said them, at the right time with the right customer, I got the same results. <laughs> and I'm like, this works. Yes, <laughs> this is unbelievable. I'm, I'm getting the hang of this, right? Yeah. And, and and that's what happens. And and it's not just for sales. It, it's for all that's of right. your employees. Everybody needs to feel like they're part of the team. What are the other keys, William, in building an unbreakable business. Well, you just keyed in on one of them and that is helping your, your team members to know that you are for them. So often leaders, business owners don't do this. It's not because they may not have that inside of them. They just didn't see it done. That wasn't how they were treated as they were coming up in the ranks. And so they do what they saw. Right. They, they do to others what they saw done to them, what they felt done to them. And, and so often it wasn't that what you experienced from Craig. And I love that story. Pete. I think that's so fantastic. That's such a sign of a great leader. Somebody who says, I am for you. I'm going to help you. I'm here to equip you and empower you so that you can succeed. Because I see more in you than what I see coming out right now. And I'm going to help bring that out. When you convey that to somebody on your team. You convey so much more than the words that you're speaking. You convey, hey, I am for you. I'm behind you. I'm on your team. And I'm going to help you get from here to where you want to go. That's what happened with you, right? It helped to develop the skills that you had into even greater skills. So you had greater effectiveness. This is what you can do for other people. And I imagine that you've taken what Craig poured into you and you have now poured that into other people. And you've seen similar results in them. This is what we get the, the opportunity, the privilege to do as leaders. We get to invest in people and see them thrive. And when you've got a team member who feels like they're being invested in, they're being poured into like that, when, when somebody feels that, that you see their value, they are going to lean in. They're not going to run down the street for another buck an hour or whatever. They're going to lean in. And, and this is how you can battle this constant churn that we see in the marketplace these days. It's by treating people with value, seeing the value in them, calling it out. When people feel that, when they know that you are for them, they're going to lean in. That's something that's inside every one of us. Yep. A hundred percent. I, um, I've been very, very, very blessed up. Oh. Steve Hauk. Good morning, gentlemen. In the Army, we always did an after-action review. Identify what went right. Identify shortcomings and issues. And identify areas of improvement. 100%. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for your sponsorship. And hey, Steve, congratulations. You built this group into over 2,000 uh, people so far. So that is awesome. And um Thank you for being here, brother. I appreciate you. So, oh, we were 
if if there's an employee, William, and they're on the verge of like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm cut out for this. Mm. I don't know if I can win. But you have an owner come alongside of you. Ah, I love you too, Steve. Um, and, and you have an owner come alongside of you and say, I'm for you. I'm on your team. I'm, I want you to win. I'm going to help you win. And we're going to win together. Yes. That, that is so huge because it's not just about winning their mind. It's about winning their hearts. That's right. If you win their heart. The mind is next and we can get there. Even if there are some challenges along the way, you know, often I get this question, William, I have this employee and they're just not getting with it. Mm -hmm. And my first question is how long have they been with you? Mm -hmm. And are you a hundred percent convinced that they're comfortable mm. because employees who are on a massive learning curve yeah. can appear to be not getting it because they're not getting it and mm. they're getting overwhelmed. And one of the things that we have to do as business owners is break it down and make it easier on them and prioritize for them. Yes. Because when somebody goes into overwhelm mode, what's the first thing they do? They shut down. That's right. And the first thing that we have to do as leaders is open them back up. Mm-hmm. And the easiest way to get them to open them back up is to let them know, I'm here for you. We've been throwing a lot of stuff at you lately. What is your number one priority? And then coaching on that. Yes. N- You know, yes, that's great. I'm glad that you understand that's the number one priority. Let let me give you a few thoughts on that. Or no, that's actually not the number one priority, but that's very important. Actually, it's number two or number three. Here's a number one. And here's some ideas about that. Either way, we're talking about it and we're making it so that they're not in this constant overwhelm. I mean, Mm -hmm. I got good grades in school. And when I went to become a furniture salesperson, it was like thousands of things coming at me. And I wanted to be the best. I was Mm -hmm. used to being the best. I was a good student. I was, you know, very successful in sports in college. And I was used to winning and I was used to being the best. And I wasn't the best anymore. I wasn't even adequate, William. I mean, I was pretty much a complete and abject failure when I started because I, it just wasn't happening fast enough for me. Now, how that appeared to other people, it was, it appeared that I didn't care. It appeared that I was shutting down. It appeared that I was even more shy than I was. And I was shy to a degree, but not totally. Um, But we sometimes have to go in and kind of rebuild uh, Mm -hmm. that employee and reprioritize for them and let them know, you know, it's okay sometimes to feel overwhelmed. And when you are, let's, let's us collectively together as a team, let, let us take a step back and help clarify things for you. Because yes. sometimes we beat ourselves up over little things. We call ourselves a failure in, in our mind. If we do that too yeah. much, what happens? You lose confidence. Yeah. You begin and we, to feel like you can't, you're not, it's not possible for you. Right. And we start to behave that way because that's that's the way we see ourselves. And that's what I love about your mindset, your stuff. You've got to be clear minded. You have to be focused. You have to and and you will attract the rest of what you need into that equation. When you're properly focused, you automatically attract one of the things 
you know, William, we might as well just talk about this kind of a little bit of a taboo thing, but you know, attracting what we want Mm -hmm. is important. Yeah. But also repelling what we don't want. Yes. Repelling that negative Nancy Mm -hmm. out of away from us. Yeah. You know, uh, repelling people who aren't interested in success. Mm -hmm. There are people in your life, life, once you decide that you're going to win, you have to leave them behind. And it's really hard to do. Yeah. And it almost feels like a huge piece of you is being left behind. Mm. And to a degree it is, but there are, there are priorities in our life and <laughs> you're going to have to leave some things and even some people behind. Now, if they're in your family, <laughs> that's a whole different equation. And, and then I would just say, avoid and minimize the best that you can. And, and listen, if someone's in your family, you love them. They're part of your family. You just don't have to buy into their negative beliefs. Mm-hmm. You know, one of yeah. the things that my mom used to say, to me constantly growing up we always felt like we were poor we felt like we were more poor than we were because of the way my parents constantly talked about it you know what went off in my mind is when i grow up i'm Mm. never gonna have to say no Mm. to my children because Mm. of money i'll be able to say yes but the reality is if you're smart enough to get that money to be able to say yes, you're also going to be smart enough to realize that you will completely ruin and trash a child if That's you right. say yes to everything <laughs> that they want, right? Because so true. Not, there's no hunger, right, William? Yeah, that's right. And, and and part of what we we want with our employees and what we need is we want them hungry. We that's want right. them to improve. We want them to feel like they're part of something that's bigger than themselves. And we want them to feel like they have a seat at the table, that they're yes. actually making a difference. And you're a hundred percent right. You said it so beautifully. You know what? No one's going to leave you over a, a buck or a few bucks or thousands of bucks. Um, when they are on mission with you, when that's they right. see the same picture that your company uh, stands for, and Mm -hmm. they stand for it with you, they're not going anywhere. If anything, if if they had some crazy wild opportunities, there's going to be a discussion because Mm -hmm. people don't leave in the middle of the night with no discussion when they feel like they have a seat at the table and they're helping to build the company. What say you? I'm doing all the talking. No, no, you're spot on, Pete. I mean, I, I think it's it's helpful as leaders and, and business owners for us to recognize the terms we use matter. And when it comes to the team members that are around me, I talk these days in terms of seasons. Hey, we're going to be together for a season. You're going to be part of this for a season, right? And that's helpful language because the last thing you want to do is for anyone to feel trapped, for anyone to feel boxed in like they don't have options. We like options. All of us like options. I don't want anybody to feel boxed, but I want them to understand that for the season that they are here, I'm going to invest in them. I'm going to pour into them. I'm going to make sure that they have every opportunity to grow and develop in what it is that they're doing and even beyond. It's important that I put enough challenge in their path, in their environment, that they will be appropriately challenged. Otherwise, they're going to get bored and bored people, well, they drift. And we've talked about that already. I want them to be appropriately challenged. And there's the opposite extreme where you're dangerously over challenged and that's not helpful. That leads to burnout. That's not where I want them to be. I want them to be appropriately challenged. I want to be stretching them a little beyond their comfort zone, a little beyond where they are right now. I want them to grow. You only grow when you're challenged, right? Growth only happens on the other side of change. We know that. Well, change comes when you have to stretch. And so what I want to do is make sure they have consistent, regular opportunities to stretch and to grow. That's going to develop them. That's going to help them understand that they're being invested in for a purpose. But I've got to be intentional about those opportunities. I've got to plan those opportunities out in advance for them so that I know, hey, I'm going to 
hey, this, this situation is coming up. This decision is coming up. I'm going to make sure they're a part of that conversation. I'm going to make sure they're in that me. I'm going to make sure I put them in this environment because that's going to stretch them a little bit. And that's going to help them to develop. That's going to help them grow. And that's going to help them see that I value them, that, that they really matter to what we're doing here. That's why I'm developing them, because I want them to grow and add even more value to what we're doing. Mm. That's so good. Um, I have uh, I have an extraordinary um, success story. Uh, a, a dealer in uh, Paducah and Benton, Kentucky, not the the uh, the biggest population the world's ever seen. Happy Z's and and. Kentucky, uh, they are, they are bucking the trend. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now business is tough out there. Some dealers are down. Some are slightly up. Most aren't, most are down. These guys are in mid double digit growth. I, I've wow. never seen anything like this, but you know what Scott and Wanda have done is they have a remarkable team of young motivated salespeople and managers who are all on the same page and by the way they're either watching this now or attempting to watch it now if they can't watch it now because you're too busy they will watch it on replay yeah. and they're not being trained just to be salespeople they are being trained to be store managers. They are being trained yes. to be the best that they can be. And Scott and Wanda are giving these uh, these young, talented people who are on mission to improve the lives of their customers uh, opportunities that they couldn't have in their wildest dreams. And they're doing so many things right. If I was writing mm. a book on how to do things right, I would just literally – take a picture of their store and then I would follow them around and write everything down that they do because they check all the boxes. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Wow. Um, but making sure they are in important meetings, William, that is just solid gold. That is, I remember being pulled into meetings that I believed William that I had no right to be in. Yeah. And I'm like, like, Bob, are you sure you want me in this meeting? He goes, Pete, you're an important part of this team. He goes, mm. yeah. He goes, mm. you're the, he, you know what he used to say? You're the only one with enough balls to tell me when I'm screwing up. <laughs> I love that. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and how did that make, make you feel? Made me feel great. I love that. I, 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 I loved it. I felt like I was part of the team. And it did was you stand a, a little straighter? Team. You stood up a little straighter and you talked yeah. a little deeper and, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's so important. Make sure they are important meetings and perhaps even a meeting, just maybe a, a smidge above the level that they're at yes. so that they're like, they do walk a little taller, yeah. you know, and that's what we want. So. I can't believe this has gone by so fast. Normally I do a chapter out of my book. I decided to skip it because this, this has been so good, but I don't want to miss. What else are we missing in building an unbreakable business? You know, the, the, the last thing that I usually talk about with this is, is I think the part that comes when you build the first pieces, when you have clear minded focus and you know where you want to go because you know where you are and you build that bridge. Now you have focus, you have clarity, you have intentionality. This helps you to design the environment where you have the calmness. You're not responding to the chaos all around you. You're leading from a place of calmness because you know where you are, you know where you're going, and you're not just going to react to what's happening around you. You're going to choose to be proactive. All of this in addition to building into your team, helping them to see their value, what this is going to do is this is going to lead you to a place of confidence. If you're doing a weekly review where you're starting off asking yourself, what went right this week? And you're celebrating your wins week in, week out, week in, week out. I tell leaders, you need to write those wins down in what I call a wins journal. I want you to capture them on paper or digitally every single week. Why? Well, because when you write it down, it helps you to remember it more. We know that neurologically. 
but for another reason as well. You're going to have a day, just like we all have, where you struggle. You're going to have a day where you wonder, can I do this? Is it even possible? And, and the imposter syndrome begins to rear its head and you wonder, man, I, I don't even, if I, am I even cut out for this? Am I doing any good at all? Those are the moments when you go back to your wins journal. Because I want you to go not with the emotion of the moment. I want you to go to the data. Go to the data, go to the wins journal, and begin to read through the wins that you have captured for the weeks and months and years previously. You know what's going to happen? You're going to begin to counter that emotional response with data. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We tend to forget our wins pretty quickly. And when you have them written down and you go back, you now have a knowledge base that you're pulling from. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that oh, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. What's going to happen? Your fear, the imposter syndrome, they're going to start to decrease. And your confidence is going to start to increase. Your confidence is based on your past wins. It's based on your past performance. When you capture your wins consistently and regularly in a wins journal, what this does is it gives you confidence that you can lead today and that you can lead into tomorrow. This is what every business owner needs. We all struggle with feelings of inadequacy, poor performance, wondering if we can possibly make it another day, another week, another month. The WINS Journal is a tool that will help you counter the negative emotions in your mindset and replace them. Replace them with facts, with data that you've captured from your journey. Ah, oh, that is so good. So, William... Many years ago, my brother, my older brother, who spent either 20 or 25 years in the Marine Corps, he goes, so brother, where is your I love me book? I go, what do you mean? <laughs> my I love me book. You call it a wins journal. I, I don't have one. What is it? And he goes, it's where you put every accomplishment. So I. We at Cronimes Furniture, when I was still in retail before I was on the other side in wholesale, um, we every customer was sent a thank you by our company, and they were also given a card. And it was a card that graded the store, and um, it was a little yellow and black card, and it graded the performance of the salesperson. And whenever we got a bad one, it was sent to us through company uh, mail. And whenever we got a good one. And so I started to make a book out of those, uh, out of the good ones. I don't think I ever got a bad one. Um, I must have gotten a bad one, but I probably being Pete Primo just threw it away and said, that crazy customer. But actually... <laughs> There's a lesson there too. Don't throw those away too quickly. Ask yourself the tough question. What did I earn that? Was I not on top of my game? And, and what was going on that I wasn't on top of my game? And how do I prevent that from ever happening again? Um, and all the notes that I've gotten over the years. And, and I will tell you, William, that there have been times in my life where things just go sideways and you're just not feeling like yourself, you know, yeah. and you go to what you call a wins journal. My brother calls it. And I love my, love me book. I just call it my scrapbook, but whatever you call it, you should have it. And you should be able to go through there. Look at this 30 years ago, Mary Jo thought I was the most thoughtful, kindest salesperson in the world. And that's really who I am. And Billy Bob said the same thing. And Johnny V said the same thing. And you know what? I'm a really good dude. I work really hard for my customers and I'm really deserving of success. And I should not be feeling the way I'm feeling right now. And by the way, here's the salesman of the month award month after month. Here's the salesman of the year award year after year after year. And by yeah. the way, you know what? I'm a stud <laughs> or a studette. And for all of you studs and studettes out there and wannabe studs and studettes, keep a wind journal. I think that's the best 
uh, one of the best things that you said all morning, uh, but it, I mean, all afternoon, but it was, everything was good. This is, this is really unbelievably great things. And it truly is answers that question. How do you build an unbreakable business? This is how, this is literally the blueprint. So William, somebody has been watching this or somebody will watch it in the in the in the very near future and they're going to say I like this William how do I get a hold of this guy because you know I think I need I need some of what this guy is talking about and how to implement it so it's easy to get in contact with me. I'm on LinkedIn. That's where I share a lot of what I'm currently learning. Uh, I have a newsletter that you can subscribe to for free uh, that will tell you what I'm reading, what I'm learning, uh, episodes of my podcast that uh, release every week with interviews with leaders. I think any entrepreneur, any business owner can learn from. I believe strongly you can learn from anybody. Sometimes you learn what not to do, but that can be incredibly valuable. 100%. So the, podcast, the podcast is full of those type of conversations. Uh, the newsletter will tell you what I'm learning and what I'm, what I'm currently thinking about. And from time to time, I have workshops, uh, seminars that I do on LinkedIn uh, through LinkedIn Live. And you can participate in one of those. Come and learn and listen and engage. These are opportunities that I provide so that leaders can grow and develop. Now, for those who want more focused help, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, and this is where I come alongside of a leader and we determine where they are, where they want to be, how they're wired, and we begin to build the path to get them there. This is what I love to do as a coach. I love to help leaders get to where they know they can be and get past what's holding them back. So often what's holding you back is the habits in your life. It's the mindset that you have. It's the beliefs that you're holding on to that may or may not be true. What I want to do is help you get past those things so that you can achieve what you know is possible. I want to add something to that. Um, you as a business owner, you as a store owner, have a hard time finding people who will challenge you. You have a hard time finding people that will be honest with you. Most of your reps, they just want you to keep buying their crap. So they're not <laughs> going to tell you the truth. They're going to say, Oh, you're awesome, dude. You know, you're, you're kicking butt and taking names. You're awesome. You don't need any help anywhere, but the good ones, they will tell you, but that's why I'm a big believer. And I've done it several times in my career. Get involved with a coach that you pay who has nothing but your best interests at heart and will help you to see your business the way it really is. And I'm going to tell you something. You may not like what a really good coach tells you. Uh, and it might take two or three sessions before he or she gets to that place because they have to learn about your business. Uh, but these are people like William who work with businesses all the time and they are used to the challenges that you face. And the reality is everybody wants something from you. The employees want to keep their jobs. The vendors want to keep their relationships. Very few people will be as brutally honest with you as you need them to be. And that's why it's invaluable to invest in yourself and to invest in your business and get a coach who has a different perspective than you do to help you grow into what you could be. And when I say you, I mean you and your company. William, I always give my guests the last word, but sometimes I have a hard time shutting up, which I just did. Um, I just, I'm a big believer in coaching and I'm a big believer in different coaches at different seasons in our life. Sometimes it might be a coach who's an expert in the quote industry, 
that mm-hmm. you're in to help you get up to the metrics where you should be. Maybe you're behind on some of the merchandising things, but I, I'm going to tell you this right now. I sell uh, mattresses and, and mattress protection and sleep essentials, two stores. That's how I make my income. I want to tell you the dirty little secret. The dirty little secret is store owners. It's not what you're selling. Mm. It's how you're running your business. Yes. It's you taking a internal look on your company. How would you like to work for yourself? How about starting there? Yeah. Get a coach, change your perspective fix everything internally that you can fix and then look for magic and merchandising because it doesn't matter what you sell until you fix your internal stuff. It doesn't matter. And you're never going to hear another rep tell you that as long as you live. (laughs) That's so true, Pete. I often say you can't see the whole picture when you're in the frame. And this is true for business owners. They're in the frame. They're in the weeds. They're in the day to day. This is why I've had a coach for many, many years, somebody to help me see what I can't see. That's why they're called blind spots. All right. So now we have to go a little bit longer because this is one of the keys people never, ever go into a business mastermind with some buddy who's leading that mastermind who hasn't been in a mastermind and yeah. never hire a coach that doesn't personally believe in coaching and has his or her own coach. So William is qualified to be your coach. Why? Because he just said the magic words that I always listen for. And that is he has a coach. Absolutely. In various areas as you said, in different seasons for different things. But I always have a coach because there's always things I want to get better at. There's always things I want to work on. And there's always blind spots that I need to address. Thank you so much for being on the show, William. This was so good. I just, I literally skipped over my chapter, but we were on a roll. It was going so good. I think we could have gone for two or three hours, dude. It was great. Thank I you. love it. Pete, thank you again for having me on the show. This has been a lot of fun. I love the conversation and I look forward to staying connected. Yeah, let's stay connected. Thank you so much, William. Have a, have enjoy Independence Day tomorrow. And thank you for being here the day before Independence Day. And uh, I will see you guys on the next show. Thank you so much, William. Take care.